Good evening, everyone, or good morning. Good evening, Luis, we in Barcelona. I'm here, Celine Sandras, with Henry Shana Fanatics, and I'm your host. And I'm pleased to um, have Dr. Luis Carrier today giving um, a presentation on minimum touch orthodontic in terms of pand pandemic. Um, a little bit about Dr. Carrier. He, um, Dr. Carrier obtained his dental degree from the University of Complutense in Madrid in 1991. He then attended the University of Barcelona, where he completed his orthodontic training and received his Master of Science in Orthodontics in 1994. In 2006, he received his doctorate in orthodontic cum laude from the University of Barcelona. Dr. Carrier was the winner of the Joseph E. Award, uh, Johnson Award, and the International Design Award Delta Gold ADI FAAT in 2009 for the care distalizers. Dr. Carrier is also a member of the editorial review board of the AJODO, and he's an invited professor of civil orthodontic department throughout the world. Dr. Carrier lectures internationally when he's not treating patients in his private practice in Barcelona, Spain. Welcome, thank you for being with us today. Thank you very much, Celine, for your this nice presentation. Hello, doctors. Hello from Barcelona, from doctors from every part of, of the world. Today we are 1,001 doctors here at this webinar. And I, I thank you, first of all, for your time and for uh, spending this uh, small part of the afternoon with, with us. Okay. Of course, we are living today in a moment that is a complex moment, not only in terms of health and in terms of, of uh, a new scenario for all of us, uh, but also uh, an, a scenario in which uh, affects to our profession deeply. No? We are working on the first row of the, uh, of the infective uh, area, a potential infective area of the, of the patients. And we are working also in a very close a scenario towards the patient. So uh, we can be contaminated or we can contaminate the patients in uh, one or the other direction. No? So we have to think and rethink a little bit uh, on how uh, we are going to work from now on in orthodontics with the uh, with this new C19 scenario. No? During the C19 scenario and after the C19 F scenario. Well, which are, which are the actual problems in the orthodontic specialty during this period of uh, COVID, in this period of C19? No? In this period of C19, we, have, we can have patients with continuous active appliances. How many times we can have patients that they have uh, appliances that are continuously working and acting and, and doing correction, no? uh, uh, like herbs, forces, transforms, pendulum, and many, many, many others that can really uh, move and can really uh, not stop the action uh, during uh, a long period of time. This means that yes or yes, we need to see the patient. So in a scenario in this one, as this one, in which we, uh, it's a big, uh, it's a big uh, threat for the, for, for the, for the containing, for, for being able to contain this, uh, this pandemic, it's important to try to uh, have appliances that really uh, give us the possibility of uh, the patient uh, being the one that handles, that handles the action of the appliance, not the appliance uh, just handling the action on top of the patient uh, without any kind of a stop, right? So this is one of the things that we find today that is generating stress to many doctors, is generating stress to many patients because uh, they need to be seen, but they cannot be seen. How many times we can see uh, also a breakage of appliances, appliances that have a high level of mechanical complexities or a high number of moving parts. Uh, how many times a herbs can be broken and then you need yes or yes to solve it. Then it becomes a big problem. Big problem for the doctor, a big problem for the patient that does not want to go to the to the dental office during this period of, of threat, and and then it's becoming a, a, a big stress point of uh, for the doctors, and also appliances with a short spans of orthodontic movement. This means those uh, techniques, those uh, ways of approaching the the, the the orthodontic treatment that that 
uh, will need yes or yes an activation act after one month to uh, become uh, to to uh, to to go forward forward in uh, in the orthodontic treatment because uh, this appliance once we do an activation uh, there is a few days of action and then becomes passive and then uh, it not is nothing more uh, what is generating this this is generating a major number of appointments a major number of appointments so which is the need today for diminishing emergencies uh, uh, real emergencies in office emergencies uh, during this uh, period of c19 our need of course is to be able to handle all the emergencies by telephone or, or using the new technologies new technologies like could be in many countries with the whatsapp uh, uh, you giving the telephone to the patients and if we can handle that by telephone or we can ask to the patient to send the uh, uh, to do a video call uh, uh, or send pictures of the scenario and guide to our patients to uh, self solution the problem by themselves but to do this we need appliances that are easy to handle at this regard and this is what it's going to be the next uh, rethinking of orthodontics, I think, in my opinion, uh, from now on. Uh, I think uh, uh, orthodontics will be completely different after this, uh, this sad uh, pandemic experience, will be completely different. And uh, the orthodontists, we are going to value so much uh, the techniques that are going to be simple, minimal, and uh, highly efficient. We will try to space the appointments as much as we can and we will try to do the treatments as shorter and more efficient as we can. So the question is, is this possible? Can we afford and can we do complex cases in a simple way? Can we really handle uh, complex cases in a short period of time and a short number of appointments? Eh? Can we uh, also handle those cases that we want to space the, 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 the appointments, maybe to solve them in four, appointments or even three appointments or five appointments total to solve the problem from the beginning to the end in this small uh, number of appointments and at the same time being able to telematically assist our patients to give a self-solution for their problems uh, this is the orthodontics that it's going to be the most uh, demanded on the post c19 or post covid a scenario in my opinion okay which is the key i think is simplification of our cases since the beginning so simplify the complexities how many times we have cases we would like to work without sagittal compromise let's see these two cases these two cases are easy cases to solve why because if we look at the canines we will see that they occlude in class one this is one case and this other case it's occluding in class one so the only thing that we need to handle is the correct position of the incisors aligned correctly the upper teeth aligned correctly the lower teeth and this is going to be an easy case to solve so but the problem is that this case did not start like that these two cases they started in a full step class two one of them was a class two division two with deep bite and retro inclination of the incisors and the other one was a class two division one with also a full step class two and a proclination of the upper incisor. So this was a problem. And this was a scenario that was much easier to solve. So how can we go, sorry, how can we go from this scenario into this scenario at the beginning of the treatment and convert a problem like this one into an easy case to treat like this one? How can we handle that easily in a situation, in a scenario in which the appliance that we use is minimalistic, is minimally invasive, super secure, and it's, got, it's activated by the patient, by the action of the patient. So if we need to isolate ourselves for a period of time in the future, we know that the patient can self-stop the action of the appliance once we have accomplished the amount of treatment that we need to accomplish and how we know when is the moment 
by using the new technologies, using cell phones, using uh, video conference or conference calls by, uh, with video assistance, uh, by using the telephone, and by using the new technology of sharing pictures and monitorizing digitally this scenario of our treatments through the platforms that we have today. Okay? How many times we have cases with this complexity, retrusion of the mandible, protrusion of the upper incisors, but cases that we can convert those cases into simple ones at the beginning of the treatment. We can convert this case in, the, in your left hand with this object into a correct sagittal condition in the first three months of time. This case from here to here, it has been a span of three months. And after this, we can jump to the solution straight away, but from a class one standpoint. The objective is to treat class one. Everyone likes to treat class ones because when we have a class one, we can approach the case with either with aligners or with brackets, but with a very easy step uh, ahead, a very easy second phase treatment with the active, uh, active. We know that orthodontics is not all about teeth. We know that orthodontics is also all about face. We are sculptures of facial traits of the patient by managing properly the position of the teeth the relation in between the bones, we can convert a patient that was not attractive, like in the beginning, like in the beginning, with a nice relation in between nose, upper lip, lower lip, and chin, with a nice supramentalis sulcus, with a nice relation between the upper lip and lower lip, and having a nice scenario. So we, at the same time that we manage properly the, the, the cases, uh, dentally speaking, we have to manage properly the soft tissues of the patient, okay? So extractions sometimes can be helpful, of course, but we need to try to diminish dramatically the number of extractions of our patients and to isolate those extractions only for those cases that will benefit the face of the patient, but not based on the mechanics that we are going to use because we work with these mechanics, we are going to extract. No, because if we manage that based on mechanics, we will not end up with beautiful faces as we want to end up normally. So our proposal today is to use a technology that is the carrier motion appliance. And this technology wants to rotate the molars around the palatal root and accomplish a good occlusion at the posterior segment of molars, bicuspids, and canines at the beginning of the treatment. At the beginning of the treatment in which we want to convert into class one the case, convert this class two into a class one. And from this class one, and we are going to be able to uh, to finish the case easily, which any system, even with aligners, even with brackets, but with a super su uh, gentle and, uh, and, and predictively uh, and predictive manner, hmm? with a, uh, with a, uh, uh, the highest rate of su possible success. Hmm? So this appliance has been designed to stop uh, undesired movements like distal tipping or undesired movements of excess of rotation of the molars, but at the same time is giving freedom to the appliance to correct the necessary movements. So the appliance is like a computer a little bit without electronics. It's, it's the electronics inside of it is the design. The design is generating, is generating collision points. So it's giving freedom on allowance to correct rotation is giving freedom and allowance to correct the distal position of, of, the, of the posterior segments, but at the same time, it blocks completely, blocks completely the upright and blocks completely the retraction, uh, uh, the, the rotation of the molars once those molars have been correctly rotated if they were needing uh, distal rotation or uh, upright. Of course, if the patient is starting without any need of distal rotation or Upright because the molar is in a good position, the appliance, when we bond it, will be already already in limited uh, contact, in limited contact with uh, or, or inside of the joint that will not exhibit any kind of rotation or any kind of, of uprighting at this particular case. And the only movement that will be exhibited will be the distalization and the change of the closure plane that will help us to invite the mandible to be exhibiting a better scenario. So this is the appliance that we suggest today for working into the uh, patient at uh, this level. It's an appliance that is very easy to work with 
it's not fine. It's that it's uh, we just place bonding material in the in the initial part, in the distal part. It's like a long bracket. We prepare the teeth. We position the uh, the appliance on the molar. We position the appliance on the canine on the mid third of the canine. We do not adapt the appliance. The appliance is it's uh, self adaptative because it has an arcuate form. So always falls correctly on the different scenarios of the of the different uh, tooth position and uh, and this will uh, be the only 30 seconds that we are going to uh, invest on on inside of the mouse mouth of the patient from now on we can monitorize this approach the accomplishment of the class one by uh, by uh, communication digital communication with the patient the patient has not to come to the office because the patient is going to use the elastics, the rubber bands, and the patient is going to stop the action of the elastics. Once we see in the pictures that the patient has been sharing with us, uh, once we see that the canine is exhibiting a correct relation. Let's see some cases. Imagine a case of mixed dentition, a case that has is six, uh, late six, seven years old, in which the patient is exhibiting the, uh, the presence of uh, mixed dentition. Uh, the patient has uh, upper incisors, uh, definitive upper and lateral and central incisors, has uh, temporary canines and temporary molars, and upper sixes erupted. So our objective is to convert the retraction, the, re the retrusive mandible, into a correct position of this mandible, and to invite this mandible to establish a correct relation at the beginning, at, as a phase one treatment. So what we suggest, well, we need to simplificate as much as we can the uh, the um, the appointments at the office of the of the patient. So what we suggest that we can do is to place the motion appliance on the upper six of the upper first upper uh, permanent molar and on the temporary K. Now, once we place this, then we place a vacuum invisible retainer. This vacuum invisible retainer will be along the whole lower arch and we will open a window on this vacuum invisible retainer for for being able to fit the vacuum invisible retainer on top also of the molars uh, on the buccal side that on the buccal side we will have a molar tube for holding the rubber bands that will be also attached on the on the upper canines so we look for the accomplishment of the class one i go back one second we are in class two so now we accomplish class one, but as we are dealing with a, with a mixed dentition, we are going to overcorrect. And what is overcorrection? Overcorrection means that we want this canine, we want this canine to be overcorrected a little bit in class three in relation with the, uh, the where it should be. And why is that? Well, because the, the surfaces, the occlusal sur surfaces of the temporary teeth are super flat. So this is giving a lot of this is giving a lot of um, um, uh, a lot of instability, instability of the of the occlusion of this temporary uh, of this temporary uh, temporary uh, mixed dentition. No, uh, the reason of that uh, once we don't have a stability of the occlusion because the, there is no anatomical locking of the class one accomplished, we need to overcorrect because some part of what we have accomplished will be lost due to this fact that the patient has certain instability of the occlusal surfaces. So now we release the appliance. I go one by one. So imagine we see the patient the first day, we see the patient at the end of the accomplishment of the class one, and then we can release the appliance and wait wait for the permanent eruption for the permanent teeth to erupt now the patient starts having the permanent teeth erupted eh? but look at the change from the beginning to the end of the of the of this phase one in which this phase one could be perfectly accomplished in two appointments the appointment number one of placement and the appointment number two we also we need to also think that the patients after this experience, this sad experience that all the world is living about the C19, are not going to be very much happy to go and, uh, into, uh, into, into uh, medical facilities. Mm -hmm. So they will be, they will be very uh, liking very much that we try to handle as many, as, as less appointments as we can during uh, the orthodontic treatment. 
So also think that the many patients will decide to do same day starts. Same day starts means that the patient is going to come for the first visit or the first appointment one day, and the same day will start the treatment. So for this purpose, we also need to have a technology that we can handle immediately. With the motion appliance, it's very easy. We have a kit of different uh, appliances. We have me different measurements. So what we do is what we see the patient, we have a first uh, 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 same day appointment, and the patient decides to start, and we can start and place the appliance on the same moment, on the sa first appointment of the patient, because we only need to select the size, we place it, and we start the treatment from that point. So we could see a patient of this, like this one, in two appointments, perfect. Look at the evolution of this patient that now we can see here an, a, a small video of the position of the mandible that she has and the beautiful, the beautiful relation that she has in relation to the nose, upper lip, lower lip and chin. So how, how will this, this mouth is going to evolve? Well, look at this. The patient has been uh, changing all the teeth and the scenario that we find at the end of the, of the phase two, of the phase one, sorry, is that probably the patient will not like to have second phase. Well, this is a case that uh, was avoided to have a second phase, okay? But look at the beautiful relation of the mandible, this retrusive mandible that started, this mandible that started so much retrusive, uh, we ended up with a correct mandible position and the evolution up to the patient when she arrived into the, into the, uh, into the, second phase uh, scenario, she has a beautiful mandible. But eight years later of this, of this uh, change of the permanent dentition, total change uh, of the permanent dentition, we can see that the patient is beautiful. She has a beautiful smile. We did not treat her uh, in second phase, but she has a good occlusion. Slim things could be enhanced. If we see the lateral incisors a little bit like that, the central incisor is not perfect, but we did not place any kind of bracket on top of them, but the patient is looking beautiful, is looking beautiful. So this is what we talk about minimalism. Post C19, post COVID scenario will be all about minimalism, all about maximum efficiency, all about minimal number of, of appointments, uh, minimal touch orthodontics. Minimal touch orthodontics is what we need to uh, to uh, upgrade at this point, I think, I think, in my opinion, for this uh, this uh, coming scenario. This is another patient with the same problem, a massive retrusive mandible. If we leave this case without interfering here, without uh, changing the, the scenario at this uh, early stage, we are going to find to end up with a with a massive problem. No, so at this point, this is the perfect age for those cases. is uh, is around is around. Uh, late six, seven years, and what we're going to do is the same. Place a motion appliance on the upper uh, six and the temporary canine and accomplish a class one, overcorrected class one SNI. Then we can place four braces if you want to align a little bit those incisors. If those incisors are very much wrongly positioned, we can do it with, with, uh, with brackets, or even if you like, you can do it with aligners, but in a ultra rapid, in will be this will be a matter of two three months of of uh, of one wire and four brackets and a, a power chain. We close the, this space and we leave the case to evolve to evolve and to change the scenario. But from from which point? From a good mandible position point. At this point, the mandible is correctly positioned. If we look at the retrusive mandible at the beginning and then the end, it's a complete different case. And which has been the evolution of this case? Well, the patient has been uh, growing. The patient is beautiful. She has a nice relation in between the nose, upper lip, lower lip, and chin, a nice supramentalis sulcus, a nice nasal label angle. And, but, and she is having a occlusion that is not perfect. Well, this patient did not want to have second phase treatment. She was in this puberal moment and she was more interested on the piercing than on the orthodontic approach, okay? But what is the scenario for her? Well, she's a nice girl. She can perfectly uh, uh, handle uh, this occlusion for many years. And maybe in the future, when she's uh, older, she comes for an aesthetic approach because this case is just has minor things to solve. But the most important thing, 
this retrusion of the mandible has been accomplished uh, with a minimal approach with emotion appliance and has been maintained over the years for a good end up of the solution. Minimalism is what we look for this post-pandemic scenario. No? So how many cases we find patients like those ones, no? patients that, uh, that can be completely uh, uh, complex. A case like this, uh, we can complicate ourselves and our treatments so much, and we can make that a treatment, maybe uh, elongate this treatment for uh, three years, and maybe do not finishing properly uh, because we were trying to, but well, finally was uh, impossible. Uh, this is an, a post uh, C19 scenario will be impossible. Patient will not be uh, open to go uh, to go 40, 50 times to an office. Will not be. So patient will look for uh, four, five appointments. This is what the patient wants. So. Can we do this in a short period of appointments? Well, we have only to be organized. This is the case, no? The case that has a full step class two, a case that has the K line should be where the green line, the green line is, no? So we don't want to extract two upper K uh, premolars because if we extract two upper premolars, we complicate so much the mechanics, and we will have many appointments to solve that. Not only for this, because we will impact negatively and the nose of the patient will be highlighted and we will not end up with a nice facial outcome. And this is very important to end up with a nice facial outcome because she's a nice girl and she has to finish with a nice profile to have many possibilities of have a happy life, all right? So how can we handle that and accomplish a class one scenario easily, easily and, and well organized into class one? Well, let's see. This is the scenario. This is the scenario where we can see the patient that is having the class two. We place the motion appliance, which is the objective with this motion appliance. The objective is we to accomplish to accomplish a class one. To accomplish a class one. So how we handle that? Look, we start like this, and we when we accomplish the green point, we are going to be have a clearance for going to the second stage of treatment. But this second stage of treatment from this scenario is much easier than from this scenario. So at the beginning of the treatment, in the three, four months of fr uh, frame time, uh, we and with only with two appointments, we can because we can monitorize from here to the end, to the end, we can monitorize perfectly by digital, by telephone or by by pictures. We can monitorize when to finish the, the action because the patient has the power. The patient is having the elastics. The patient is having the gasoline. Or the or the fuel for for the correction, then we can stop the action of the appliance. And from that point, we will have a completely different scenario. This upper crowding of the four anteriors will be released, and we will have the most ideal scenario to easily correct this case. Spaces in between the incisors, those spaces that we have generated after the accomplishment of the class one platform. We call this the class one platform because it's a platform. It's the canines by Cospits and Mollers are in a perfect matching in a locked scenario of class one. In a, it's a super solid locked scenario. That is the interesting point. Amazingly, we will also have a correction of the rotation of the molars. This rotation of those molars, this rotation of those molars is extremely important for the accomplishment of a solid and consistent class one, a solid and consistent class one of the molars and by cosmic canines for the whole life of the patient is what we like to call stability, long-term stability of our cases. Will be mainly because we accomplish a good, uh, a good occlusion, we accomplish a good, a good uh, rotation of the molars, and we establish a correct, a correct uh, occlusion. Now, once we have those spaces, what do we have to do? Well, at this point, once we have accomplished the class one, we can remove the appliance and we can treat this case with two possibilities. One of them is with aligners. It's a good option. Using aligners is a good option. But if, if we use aligners and we don't want to start uh, trying to diminish the number of of splash or generating uh, the use of rotatory of rotatory elements in 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 the office because of the of the of the of the flow of the of the of the air or airflow that we generate 
uh, then we, we would select aligners. But if we select aligners, we have to make sure that we select attachless aligners because we don't want to place attachments also in order to uh, to then have to uh, place attachments and so look for a system uh, for like an attachless aligners like would be the SLX aligner system of Henry Schein Orthotics that is the attachless aligners very interesting element no once we accomplish class one now we are ready to accomplish the the second part of the treatment why the mandible has gone forward because the normally when the patient is having a retrusion of the mandible the mandible is invited is invited to establish a new scenario by changing the occlusal plane we change the occlusal plane we distract the condyle and we invite the mandible to be relocated forward in a better size direction so now here we have the good scenario uh, that we need now it's a moment of placing the brackets what are those brackets for first of all we want to correct the slim with the first wire, the slim rotations. Simultaneously, we want to close the spaces that we generated in between the incisors. So what we are going to use is a, it's a, uh, it's a power chain. This power chain will close the spaces in between the four anteriors. Close the spaces in between the four anteriors. And then when, when those spaces are closed, we will make sure that we place a figurate metallic ligature to maintain to maintain those four anteriors closed as a unit and as a solid unit. So we are going to remove the power chain and we are going to place a anterior power chain. This anterior power and uh, anterior ligature, figurate metal ligature, this will maintain the four anteriors together. And now we have three parts. Two posterior parts that are the class one platform that they fit in perfect matching class one with the lowers and the anteriors that are still forward in relation where we should be, but they are already closed as a unit. So the only thing that we need now is to retract, to bring back those four anteriors. So we change the wire by a rectangular 1925 copper nitride wire, and then we place a power chain. As you see, we are working with the carrier SLX bracket. This bracket is a passive self regulating bracket. This is another thing that we need to brainstorm about in the future. This is another thing that we need to brainstorm about in the, in the coming future. Why? Because we need to have a sliding, a sliding of, the, of, the, um, of the brackets. We need to have a sliding of those uh, of, of those brackets and the wire has to be able to slide easily and retract the anteriors with a power chain. So if we do not have, uh, if we do not have ligatures in the, in, the, in the brackets, the sliding is much easier. So this is the objective to retract easily and to retract gently these posterior segments in a correct relation, in a correct relation. So this is what we do. This is what we pretend, we place a power chain. But remember, the power chain has to be placed from the second bicuspid to the first bicuspid and from the first bicuspid to the hook of the wire, to the hook of the wire. And the objective of this is to do not place the power chain on the upper molar because we don't want to rotate those molars back immediately. Because if we rotate those molars back immediately, what we are going to do is to lose the occlusion of the bicuspids and caimans that is in perfect class one. We don't want to rotate the molars immediately. All right. So this is the objective to retract the anteriors properly in a good relation. Imagine it's so organized, it's so easy, so simple. This is the simplicity of a system. Accomplish class one, align the, the anteriors, close the spaces and retract the anteriors. That's it. So it's this, in a complex scenario where we started, we end up in a simple way to a, a, an easy appointment, an, an easy relation at this case, eh? for instance. For instance, having a nice airway of the patient, having exhibiting a nice, uh, a nice occlusion and a nice, pre, uh, and a nice um, aspect of the face of the patient. Eh? We have here a lovely girl with a, with a lovely smile, with a lovely uh, uh, profile and, uh, 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 and very attractive. 
So this is the objective, not to only, not only balancing the position of the teeth, but also balancing the relation uh, with the upper incisors and, uh, and this rib. Like this patient, for instance, has a class two division two. This is a completely different case. Probably this is one of the most difficult cases. Divide, retroinclination of the incisors, full step class two. So how can we handle that? It's easy. So we place the motion appliance. We don't have to do anything. We do not interact. The patient is going to use the rubber bands and will appear at the office like this in class one. So once we have this scenario, maybe we can have a little bit of extrusion. You look at the extrusion of this canine in this particular, in this particular uh, uh, right, uh, right uh, place of the patient. Look at the scenario. But uh, interestingly, interestingly, this does not affect to the gingiva, does not affect to the margin, because immediately when we place the first wire, levels and places and places the, the case into the uh, into the correct height, into the correct height. But look at that. Look at the deep bite that we where we started, super deep bite, and we ended up already seeing the lower incisors and uprighting, self-uprighting the incisors of the uh, of the of the patient why is that because we changed the occlusal plane we invited the mandible to go forward and these low incisors touch palatally palatally the the upper ones and uprighted them and intruded them so the scenario in two appointments can be can be, because can be done in two appointments this we can place the appliance we can digitally monitorize the page a patient and this was a patient of course of pre pre-pandemic uh, pre-pandemic so we we are not we were not uh, interested in in into handling this digitally but this can be perfectly handled digitally and uh, once the patient arrives the scenario is completely different now we can do with aligners or we can do it with braces we choose in this particular case braces and we do the same protocol closing spaces uh, placing uh, uh, closing the spaces retracting the anteriors giving torque and more intrusion and finishing the case we finish the case with the gingival margins perfectly that they have not been suffering no pain any kind of token so don't worry about about over eruption of the canine if this happens okay and look at the patient. The patient has now a beautiful exhibition of the position of the mandible in a correct relation. Uh, the patient started with a retruded mandible. The patient ended up with a correct mandible position in a correct relation. A case like this. This is a patient that is very retrusive, has a massive, a massive class two, super overjet, super overjet. This is a big problem. But it's not a big problem if we look at this with the eyes of the motion applying. If we look at this with the eyes of the motion appliance and we see this class two, is the same seeing this class two than seeing a two millimeter class two, a mild class two. It's the same because the appliance has the capacity, uh, according to the use of the elastics and to the, uh, the, 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 the uh, and to the cooperation of the patient, we, has the capacity of solving exactly with the same rate of success this case than a super mild case of class two. But so what we do, we place the motion appliance. What we pretend to do is to generate the class one and rotate the molars. We pretend to generate this class one from this wrong resonator to clack a super matching occlusion of the posterior segments. And once we have this, we have a completely different scenario. Look at this. Look at the overshade at the beginning. Look at the overshade three months after the accomplishment, uh, after the, the action of the motion. This, in a patient like this, of 15, 15 years old, this is a case that will be super fast if the patient is a good patient. Super fast. Eh? So here is the patient. Now, it's started. We accomplished class one. Once we accomplished class one, now we place the first leveling wire. Now we have, a, 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 with this, the new SLX 3D bracket, we have a three-wire sequence. But the probably around the... 35 40 percent of our cases we have a two wire sequence two wire sequence we go from the 015 to the 1925 in some other cases in the other uh, 60 cases 60 percent of the cases 60 65 percent of the cases we go for the three wire sequence 015 2020 1925 but this is objective minimize the number of appointments of our patients at the office the objective of this is retracting the anteriors this patient will retract the anteriors, but now 
we protect, we are protected because the posterior segment is locked in class one. The posterior segment is locked in class one. So we retract easily, easily the anteriors. The patient is having a bolt on discrepancy, so the lateral incisors are smaller and we will need some uh, reconstruction of the of the anatomy, but here we have a patient that has a mandible that is balanced, a position of the mandible that is adequate, a position of the mandible that is well established. We started with a super class two, and in a short period of time, this is a patient that ended up in less than 12 months, 11 months and something, we ended up this treatment. And in this case, if it is digitally monitorized, and we step, we do a same day start, this case can be perfectly be finished in four appointments. Perfectly. If we digitally monitorize every step and we squeeze our minds to, uh, to do the effect that, uh, uh, to do uh, in the distance, the effect of the, that we would do uh, uh, coming to our office. No? Mm -hmm. Look at the change of the airway. Look at the enhancement. Look at the enhancement of the airway at the end of treatment. This airway that now it's truly, it's truly, well, well, uh, well, uh, open, you know. This is a patient of 25 years old. This patient has 25 temporomandibular pain clicking and limitation of opening, okay, with superclustering. How can we handle that? Pain clicking, limitation of opening, and this is the scenario 25 years. So, what we are going to do is to place the motion appliance, we, we place the clear motion and accomplish a class one. We need four months, but from this to from this scenario of uh, of pain and clicking to this scenario can be done in two appointments: the placement, if it is a same day start, and the removal of the appliance. And from now on, can be finished with aligners if we want. In this particular case, we finish with braces, but could be perfectly finished with an easy work with aligners. This is a perfect case to work with. It's easy, simple. It's done. But amazingly, after the accomplishment of the class one, the patient has no more pain or clicking. Why? Because we invited the mandible to, to release from the deepest part of the fossa and do not impinge action on the distal part of the disc that where is the most sensitive area of the disc and the most area of the, where the inflammation is. No? So in this particular case, we just open the, uh, the bite with the posterior bite planes and we build up and, and then we place the SLX 3D bracket the carrier is extremely bracket clear, and this is a bracket that, that, that we just released, is, uh, and also will help us to do a short period of time with the M wires. Remember, three wires, uh, M1, M2, M3, M1, O15, M2, 2020, uh, M3, 1925. So we level with the 2020, and we retract the anteriors with the 1925. Amazingly, because in six months of races, we have already uh, finished a case, eh? four months plus six months, in 10 months, we have finished a case, we have released the temporal mandibular pain and clicking and finished a massive case that was a patient that started with temporal mandibular pain and clicking, 25 years old, and we did not need any kind of surgery, we did not complicate the life of our patients. Post C19, post COVID scenario will be all about not complicating life to our patients. So. This webinar of today is to brainstorm a little bit about this. Cases like those in which is coming patient with pain and clicking on the temporomandibular joint. Class 2 scenario, and we want to treat him with aligners. If we do this treatment with aligners from the beginning, we are not going to invite the mandible to go forward because we are going to work only on distalization. But we want to bring this mandible forward to release the pain at the temporomandibular level. This is, we cannot promise the patient that we are going to release the pain, but for sure we are all going to be able to probably release the stress on this area by distracting the condyle from the deepest part of the fossa, because normally the disc of those patients is forward and the condyle is impinging, is impinging the distal portion of the disc or the distal ligament of the patient. So <clears throat> we like to call better together. We place the clear motion appliance and we open spaces in between the incisors. We place the clear motion appliance and we accomplish class one and we generate the spaces. Nothing better to work with than with spaces and aligners. Aligners love spaces. Aligners hate crowding because crowding needs to shave teeth. With spaces, we don't need to shave teeth. We don't need to do IPRs, right? 
So we place the motion appliance on this particular case. This is a patient of 40 years old, 39 years old. So we place the motion and we accomplish class one. This was needing six months to accomplish class one in this particular case. Okay, we can be six months, but in this particular case should not be necessary for the patient to come to the office to do anything until the patient accomplishes class one because we are not going to do anything on, on top of the patient. We are just spectators, spectators of what's going on. Hmm? What have we accomplished here? A uh, distalization, a uh, rotation of the molars. We have accomplished a good rotation of those molars and then a class one of the posterior segments. Now, now what we can do? Well, at this point, once accomplished this, we have this patient that now has no pain, no clicking, no, no, no nothing in the, in the temporomandibular joint. Hmm? Look at this was retrognatic, and now the position of the mandible is balanced. And the most important thing, no pain, no click, and the DNJ. Hmm? This is the most important thing at this, at this regard, at this regard. We just distracted this condyle, and we invited the mandible to be relocated forward. OK, here we have the x-ray of the patient. And now we are going to change into the aligners. We are going to do the treatment with aligners. So we do the treatment with aligners. We place the, uh, the the aligners, this was a case for Invisalign. We did it with 28 aligners, changing them every five days. Why five days? Because we are dealing with spaces. When you don't deal with crowding, we can change aligners much faster. So you do even more faster. This means that was six months of motion plus four months and two weeks of aligners. Ultra short period of time, I finish the case in a short period of time with a good occlusion, but the most important thing, asymptomatic of temporomandibular pain and clicking. And the patient looks much nicer, much better. But we did an experiment. We did an experiment and we generated a, a second case, a second case to generate what? Another case and send it to Invisalign to see if, out, if without the motion, we could solve this with Invisalign. So the only way to solve this with Invisalign is to distalize the tooth, the upper tooth. But if you distalize the upper tooth, you are not going to be able to invite this mandible to go forward and you're not going to release the pain and clicking of the temporomandibular level. Hmm? So at the same time, we'll be crazy about number of aligners. Remember, we after motion, we needed only 28 aligners. And without doing motion, we would need 83 aligners to finish this case. On top of this will be, of course, the number of refinements that will happen if we go directly for all the aligners. It's crazy, simply crazy to go only with aligners. Aligners are good, but aligners with motion is the perfect combination, better together, because this minimizes the number of appointments of our patients, minimizes the treatment times, maximizes satisfaction of our patients. So we diminish a 66% the number of aligners just because we were working with the motion appliance at the beginning and converting this case into class one. So what about class three? Let's talk about class three a little bit, no? Because we have been working with class two, but you say, hey, you know, we have class threes also in, the, in, in, in our offices. Well, here is a case, 21 years old, long face, class three, uh, the maxilla is impacted, the mandible is, is projected forward, the patient is having a massive negative overjet, the patient does not want surgery, does not want surgery. Can we enhance that? Can we treat this in a, in a simple manner without surgery, in a minimally invasive manner? Look at the negative overjet of this case. Look at the scenario of the mandible. Look at the, uh, the tooth position. Well, what we're going to do is first of all, to place the brackets in the upper jaw. And the objective will be align the uppers and voluminize the maxilla to give support for those upper lips and to this upper lip to be protracted forward and to maximize the beauty of the maxilla, of the upper maxilla position on the lips position of the patient. After accomplishing a little bit of alignment, then we choose the motion appliance. We place the motion appliance, but as the patient is lacking, is lacking uh, lower for smallers, we are going to place the short motion from six, uh, from, from second bicuspid to the canine in both sides. Objective of this will be to convert this negative object, self-convert into positive object. So we start, this is the first month, the negative object has been diminished. Second month, the negative object is not anymore. We are a little bit of positive object, but we give a third month and now we have positive object we still have not placed the brackets in the lower arch, but we already have spaces in between the lower incisors. We already have position and we have positive origin. Now, 
Now it's easy. Now we place the brackets. Now we train the patient to position the tongue properly. Now we, we, will we say, release the tongue from the middle in between the teeth, put the tip of the tongue on the palate, and now let's leave the wires to close the bite for us. Let's leave the wires to close the bite for us. One thing that helps very much in those patients is to place tongue tamers, those little spikes placed behind the lower incisors. So this refreshes the mind to the patient to put the tongue back and never put the tongue in between. What we do is we bring forward the posterior second molars and the, on the second molar on the on on the side on the right side of the patient and the third molar for avoiding the necessity of having an implant uh, in the lower six in the in the right side of the patient. Okay, and we finish. We finish like this, and you say, okay, uh, occlusally, well, occlusally is functional. We have a correct uh, bite, a correct uh, overbite, a correct scenario, but the most important. Thing the patient has an attractive profile. The patient has an attractive profile. And this is the objective, to balance the natural beauty of the patient, to balance the facial traits of the patient. A patient that started with this malocclusion of class three, a patient that finished with a nice occlusion, without surgery, with a minimally invasive approach, with a correct relation. Look at the overbite that the patient has. Look at the, uh, at the change on the widget price, the key point of the change, of the massive change of the face, is the change in the counterclockwise change, the counterclockwise change of the occlusal plane. The counterclockwise change of the occlusal plane is the key point of this, of this massive change of, of, the, of the aspect of the, of the class 3 malocclusion. Hmm? Same happens in class 2. The clockwise change also enhances the position of the mandible in relation with the maximum. This is the width appraisal. This is the secret of the massive impact on the face with this counterclockwise or clockwise change, uh, depending on the type of malocclusion. And look at the x-ray of the panoramic x-ray, the respect for the roots of the patient. No, Every root is in a correct relation. We have a release. We have brought the second molars in the space of the first molars in the lower, the, eight, the third molars in the space of the, of the second molars in the lower. And now we finish with a patient that is, I think, is, 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 is attractive, is attractive, it started with a lacking of attractiveness and ended up, uh, well, ended up that he can go with his Harley Davidson uh, to, to see, to see the, 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 the woods and to see the beautiful city of Barcelona, uh, the city that we are missing now because we are staying at home, but it's in our dreams, right? This is another case, another case that started, well, uh, had a treatment, a former treatment years ago and came to our office with a, a scenario of class three. Why? Well, because patient grow, eh? and this is a scenario in which the patient is having had a former treatment uh, years ago and comes to the office with a class three scenario. How can we handle that? Have we to uh, uh, do surgery? The patient does not want surgery. Can we give an alternative? Of course, this is a case that can perfectly handle by the motion appliance. What we're going to do, we place the motion. We uh, place build ups. We protect the upper arch with a vacuum invisible retainer. We don't have the vacuum invisible retainer in this picture because this is a same day start. The patient came to the first appointment on the same appointment, started the treatment. So we did not, we're not having the chance of doing the, the vacuum invisible retainer. And now we accomplish class one. We started with class three, we accomplished class one. Well, but we do not step here. We go further, we go for a super. Uh, super correction. We go for a class two. Three months in total. Three months in total from the beginning of class three to an scenario of class two. Positive overjet, spaces in between the incisors. Is this an anterior open bite? No. It's just a change of the contraclockwise change of the occlusal plane. But look at the change on the face in three months. Who is the hero of this kid now? The orthodontist. Because in three months, change. What for him was a dream. Why is that? Because of the width appraisal, the change of the counterclockwise change of the clusal plane. This is the point. Intrusion of the molars, counterclockwise change of the clusal plane, intrusion of the lower molars, counterclockwise change of the clusal plane, extrusion of the lower canines, and change completely the relation between the maxilla and the mandible. This is the point. Eh? Look, total treatment time and eight months, three months with motion, five months with SLX bracket. Those are cases of four appointments in the office, no more. 
four appointments on the office. So you can go from big day one to day uh, to, to the last day in a short period of time. This we have to brainstorm about this during this this confinement because this is what is going to happen after this pandemic. We need to space our patients in the office. We are not going to be able to have probably, probably, hopefully, yes, but to have uh, the waiting area full of people and, and in every chair uh, patients. At the beginning, at least not. So we need to space this, uh, and we cannot handle having a monthly appointment with our patients. So we need to reinvent ourselves. Look at him. He's a good-looking patient with a good, uh, good relation, without surgery, no surgery, with a respect on the, re on the roots of the patient, super respect. We did not extract the thermology. Here is the, here is the testimony. This is another patient who is coming from Lithuania, from Lithuania. Um, Lithuania is probably around five hours flight from Barcelona, more or less, I don't know. Eh? But uh, it means that uh, to come to the office is not possible. So the first appointment is coming with a class three. Class three is a patient, is adult patient. Uh, I don't remember the age now, but probably is 20, 20 long, long 20s. Eh? And she's having a class three. Mm -hmm. So uh, does she need, and, and she's having pain and clicking at the TMJ. This is not very typical because class threes do not really have pain and clicking that many, many patients, but she's having that. Why is that? Because the condyle is sitting at the deepest part of the fossa, is sitting at the deepest part of the fossa and is bringing the disc forward in this particular case. So we need to distract this condyle and the best way to distract it is to the counterclockwise change Counterclockwise change the occlusal plane. So we distract the condyl and we release a space for the TMJ to go uh, into the correct position. So we place the vacuum in the subretina. We place the motion on this first time that we see the patient. The patient came from Lithuania. We met her for the first time. Uh, we explained the treatment. The patient said, okay, I start immediately. We were able to start immediately. We, we did not have to do anything in the lab. And uh, we place the motion and at night, and at night, the patient at that night, the patient is going to where? Is going home, is going home, is flying home. But what, with what? With the appliance. So uh, in the second appointment, we have a class one scenario. Now, this case is super easy. From the class one scenario, this case is super easy. From this point, we have spaces in between the incisors. The canines are occluding in class one. So what we accomplished is this is scenario. What we accomplished is this is scenario. So now we release the, the, the impingement of the temporomandibular. We distracted the condyle and we invited the mandible to be relocated back in the better position. This has been the second time in our life that we see this patient. But the patient is already solved in regarding to her class three. Now the patient is totally asymptomatic of the pain and clicking. Very interesting because the pain and clicking has been released. Now we are ready to walk. To what? To go to the to go to the um, to go to the uh, to the uh, to the placement of the bracket. Look, uh, it's, this is the communication with the patient. How can we handle this scenario? How can we handle this scenario of the uh, of the correction in the distance, living in Lithuania? Because today we have the cell phones, and the patient every month is sending pictures of her evolution. And the patient every month is sending me pictures and we draw, we draw on the pictures and we say, yeah, keep going, you are doing very well, come on. So you can perfectly easily monitorize the case in the distance. We don't need to handle that in office, in office. So on the same second appointment, we remove the appliance and we place uh, the brackets. We could place aligner, al aligners if we want. But we could do uh, we could do uh, uh, brackets, but with brackets, what we do is we send the patient back home with already with the power chain in the anteriors in order to uh, to to uh, to squeeze the uh, the correction. At the third time, the patient comes to the office. The patient already comes with the four anteriors closed. Now, now we are going to retract the four anteriors. We retract the four anteriors. We place the elastics on the hook of the wire. Why? Because we need the power chain to retract, but, but the power chain has a limited power of retraction. 
So what we did is we trained the patient to use the rubber bands on the hook of the wire in order to, to from home, retract those anteriors. Before going out of the office in this third appointment, we also placed a coil spring also from the lower molar to the, to the hook of the wire because we wanted to also to have the coil spring. It's not in the picture because I placed after the picture, but on this third appointment is what we did, okay? The objective will be to retract those four anteriors. So this will be the objective. If we look at the animation, we will see that we pretend. We pretend to place the power chain and to retract the four anteriors. This is the objective. Hmm? So this is the third appointment. In the fourth appointment and the last one of her treatment, in four times, we end up with the treatment. We end up with the treatment and we monitorized when is the moment to come because the patient was sending pictures of the evolution. And once we see, okay, now you're done, you can come, the patient takes the plane and comes. But this is the post COVID scenario that we need to handle in the coming months because we cannot see the patient every day in our office, in our office. Nine months total treatment time four total number four appointments in total and we finish with a patient that has no pain no clicking that looks nice has a good uh, a good occlusion a good finishing without surgery beautiful smile beautiful lips super attractive and one important thing maintaining her facial traits without pain and clicking in the temporomandibular joint that she started with. And she is the scenario. Look at the change. In nine months, four appointments. Why can we do this? It's not magic. It's minimalism. This is what we want to share today about, no? This is a, uh, she explaining a little bit about her experiences about this. This is another kid living in, the living in uh, Burkina Faso, in, in Africa. He is working on the third world. He's a magnificent, a magnificent person working also always for the, the, the people that has less in the world. No? But she, he wants to have a solution for his occlusion. And she's having a class three. She, he, has, he, he does not want to have surgery. The question is, can we help him having this scenario of class three? Of course. Of course we can handle that. The class three motion is, the, is, a, is a perfect solution as an alternative to surgery in probably 95 plus percent of our class three malocclusions that we have in, in, in our offices. In the last 10 years, in our office, we have done surgery of class three in two cases. And we have treated hundreds, probably, probably, Three severe, 300, around 300 severe class three cases, probably we have in treating uh, in, in this regard. Mm -hmm. So the, the thing is that we place a short motion, and in the second appointment, or the first appointment after placement, the second time we see the patient, the patient comes like this. And you say, oh, it's open bite. No, it's not open bite. It's just a collision point at, the, at this bicuspid. So what we do is we change for braces, but look at the change, massive change of this patient in the second time of our life that we see him. Now on the same appointment, on this second time of our life that we see him, we place the braces, we place the self legating brackets. self legating brackets are the answer, are the answer for the post C19 scenario, I think, if we go for braces on our cases. I think uh, that, uh, the traditional ligation is limiting us, is generating an scenario to the orthodontist and to the patient that is obligating to him or making, may, making him mandatory to go and visit the orthodontist at least a month, every month, and to elongate the treatment unnecessarily. So this is something that we have to think about that maybe it's time to think on, on super effective uh, uh, mechanics in terms of maximizing the capacities of the uh, super elastic wires with low friction, with low friction. Mm -hmm. Look at this, the patient disappeared for one year. 
He never came back from Africa after one year without giving any notice and came back like this with the first wire, with the first wire. Then on this day, we changed for a rectangular wire to finish and we, start, we kept the rectangular wire for three more, uh, three more weeks and we finished. But look at him. In four appointments, in four appointments, we finished a class three malocclusion, lovely, with a nice smile, good looking boy, no any more class three, and with a minimally, minimally invasive approach. Look at the change of the profile. Four appointments in total. Four appointments in total. Hmm? Yeah, here is the patient explaining a little bit, a little bit uh, uh, of his experience. And now for finishing, what about mixed dentition? How can we interfere? How can we, uh, how can we make it easy? How can we make it easy in those cases? I think face mask is a type of appliance that uh, it's too much invasive for the patient. We have to think about a little bit more minimalistic. Can we upside down this case with this? Well, our proposal is to make the transversal and sagittal at the same time and place the motion appliance on the lower molar, on lower six, and on the temporary canine, and simultaneously work on transversal if necessary. If not necessary, we don't work in transversal and we only work on sagittal. But we place this and we will see the patient at the accomplishment of the class one. So imagine after one appointment, six weeks of action of the emotion, six weeks of action of the motion, we see this patient that is a complete different patient. But remember, we are working with mixed dentition and the instability of the occlusion because of the occlusal surfaces of the case are going to limit our stability. So we are not going to stop here. We are going to bring the case into class two, generate a positive overjet and generate a class two case. Look at the profile of the patient now. It's not a class, a class two. So we come from a class three, we, uh, we go through a class one uh, facial scenario and we generate a class two scenario because we need to overcorrect to know, because we know that we are going to lose uh, by the instability of the occlusion part of what we have accomplished on this correction. And also we will lose a little bit part because of the uh, genetics of the class three genetics of the patient, right? So here is the patient that can jump uh, happy into the pool with his mandible position uh, correct uh, with good feedback. So how is the patient at the end of the evolution of the permanent dentition? The patient arrives into the permanent dentition with a correct overjet and overbite. Now we have only to finish this case easily. We place a short period of brackets, ultra short period of brackets, eh? and we finish. Five months total bracket in mouth period and we finish the case so here today we have been sharing with you what i think is the post covid scenario the c19 is going to change the way we see orthodontics and we have been working with many complexities with many appliances that have been complex to work with that many appliances that has been generating emergencies that we we could handle in the past but will be difficult to handle in the future. Uh, the scenario I think that we will have in our offices, at least until we do not have the vaccine for this pandemic, will be a scenario we will have to establish a certain distance in between patients. So this will not make worth to, uh, we have a limited time. So uh, what we need is to diminish number of appointments of our patients in our office. But for that, uh, to accomplish this, we need to work with technology. We need to work with what has been designed to make easy and have given easiness to the orthodontic treatment. Simplification. Motion appliance is an option that will help us amazingly in converting complexities into simple elements, into simple things. But then on the second stage, when we jump in braces, we need to have braces that has to be efficient. Carrier SLX bracket with the new wire sequence, for instance, is a sequence that is uh, super minimal in terms of number of wires and super effective in terms of number of appointments and efficiency during intervals of appointments. It means that when we place the braces with the wire, the wire will work until we see the patient the next day and the scenario that we will find will be much more easier than we had at the beginning. 
And in the middle, we will not have to see the patient because we will not need to activate anything because the system has very, uh, very fluid, a very, a very easy flow because of the low friction of the systematics and the organized protocol that we follow. No? So thank you very much. I want to share with you this video that tells you what about. What is confidence? Where does confidence begin? How do you create it? We build solutions, seek innovation. We never stop. But are we able to build confidence, to create lifelong beautiful smiles, to change patients' lives? We spent the last decade developing state-of-the-art orthodontic products, helping clinicians provide the highest quality of care to their patients. We started transforming the orthodontic industry by listening to our customers. It's not about numbers. It's not about having more. It's about offering the best, caring the most, and making a difference. But even that was not enough for us, because the best is always inside us. We just need to find it. Technology is not math. It's skills, it's performance, it's knowledge. It's mind-blowing. We made our best by working with world-renowned orthodontists, by hiring best-in-class employees, by advancing engineering technology, and by hosting global educational programs. And now we have something more to give, something we created ourselves with heart, diligence, and commitment. Because we are makers, crafters, doers, Finally, we can offer solutions to clinicians that create lifelong smiles and elevate the quality of life. We are here at this place, at this time, to drive the technologies that will set the path for decades to come. And we are just getting started, right now. So this is what I wanted to say, no? uh, that uh, we have been spending our last years trying to innovate, uh, but the, fo the following path that we have been working on has been simplification, minimizing the orthodontic procedure, making easy the orthodontic process to the doctors and to the patients. And uh, this is what we have been sharing today, uh, our experience on simplification, and I hope uh, this will help you in your practice, in your uh, daily practice after this uh, sad pandemic element. This says uh, stay at home and means that stay home, we have to stay home. I have been, I am at home and I have been for three weeks already home and probably I will be for three more weeks at home. And uh, it's a moment to think, it's a moment to brainstorm, it's a moment to put things in, in, in perspective uh, and things like that. So take this time for staying home to reorganize your, your uh, way of treating your treatments, your patients, and, and making easier your life, easier your, your, your things. Hope this has been helpful for all of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. I have some question from the audience. Oh, perfect, so, tell me, Ms. Um, Would you recommend uh, taking the third molars out before class three motion applies? Always yes. Um, there are patients that uh, they they it's it's not worth to remove them because the position that the molar have uh, in these particular cases we are not going to extract them. But uh, but normally, if possible and is feasible, uh, extract their molars for the treatment of class three. Not necessary on class two, although there are studies that is, is even more efficient uh, the motion. Uh, extracting third molars, uh, no, no, not more efficient, sorry, is faster uh, because it is, is uh, the same efficient. We accomplish uh, class one always if the patient cooperates, but is faster the motion with the extraction of third molars uh, also in class twos. Hmm? What is your retention protocol after phase one treatment with motion? Nothing. Air. Air. Nothing. Removing and leaving the case alone nothing on the mouth, leaving the teeth to evolve spontaneously. 
the patient no appliances no appliances what if you have a patient with missing um the two upper lateral incisors how do you treat the case two uh, missing two upper ah two missing two upper lateral inside in, in class two and class three i know uh, um, uh, anyway normally uh, normally uh, if we have a two upper missing lateral incisors if we have a two upper missing lateral incisors what we use is the uh, is the uh, class three motion a little bit to help onto the shift of the of the of this uh, of of the of the anteriors to come forward uh, the important point is that uh, the, we we prefer always to close spaces and convert canines into laterals and bicuspids into canines on those cases because long term or mid term implants on the lateral incisors is not a good aesthetic solution eh? uh, maybe it's at the beginning but uh, mid term long term is not going to be interesting so but the important thing is not to pay a token on the profile of the patient so we need to enhance the and voluminize the maxilla many times it's very helpful to use the class three motion for this purpose to enhance the the uh, the position of the maxilla bone. patient has to wear an aligner on opposite arch of the motion appliance like a retainer correct correct the lower uh, the lower vacuum invisible retainer is a must to protect the lower arch we don't want the incisors to flare forward so the vacuum of the retainer will contain everything beautifully the aligners though the retainers the vacuum retainers are strong so it's a perfect solution for the for the for the uh, as an anchorage tool no? as an anchorage tool in class 2 and class 3 do you use an occlusal bite protector uh, class three occlusal bite protect. Uh, well, uh, yes, always after accomplishing accomplishing the class one platform with the motion appliance, what we do normally is we build up a little bit on the posterior segment, or if there is was a deep bite of the case, if in class two or class three is a super deep bite, sometimes the build ups we place them behind the upper inside, depending. Do you incorporate a curve of speed in the upper wire while um, retracting the upper incisors? No, normally not. One of the things that is more interesting of the motion appliance is that this, those deep curves of speed are diminished, especially the uppers, are, are, are diminished, are diminished uh, um, uh, spontaneously by the anterior posterior change while the use of the motion appliance. So the a scenario of deep uh, uh, curve of speed uh, that we started with after the motion is much smoother. It's more smooth and it's much easier to handle. Are tongue tamers always used in class three cases? No, uh, we also use tongue tamers in uh, class two malocclusions. Uh, tongue tamers is to train, to help the patient uh, to remember to never place the tongue in between upper and lower incisors because if the patient places the tongue in between upper and lower incisors uh, the patient is going to have is going to have uh, 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 an impossibility of closing the bite uh, an impossibility of closing the bite so what i recommend is to train the patient about the tongue look at the youtube in youtube uh, place carrier uh, open bite carrier open bite uh, and you will find an animation, an animation on how to handle the tongue positioning, the tongue position. Or in carriersystem.com, carriersystem.com, you have a lot of uh, 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 a lot of uh, information. Eh? It's it's like this. It's it's name like this. Um, tell, uh, Celine, tell. Can you use the motion appliance on one size only? And if you do, would it lead to TMG problems? What, what? Can you use the motion appliance on one side only? And if you do... Yes, 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 you can. But uh, I am not very, I am not very, uh, very fan of this. Eh? Uh, I am not very fan of this because I prefer, even if we have a class one in one side, I prefer to place both and to use night elastics in the side that is correct. Because uh, it gives me more, more um, stability to the other, the, the correct side, while we correct in the wrong side. 
but they are doctors that are only using one with a lot of success and they are very happy using one. At the, at the time you achieve the class one, do you put the braces at the same time of the appointment or you wait a month for, the, for retention? Oh, no, 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 we never wait. We just, the, the, best, the best thing you can do is look for a super class one. Super class one is the perfect exhibition of the intercuspation of the upper canine in between the lower canine and the bicuspid. So if we have this, we are going to be able to, to uh, finish uh, beautifully uh, the cases like, uh, like, we, like we want. Right? Um. So immediately on the same day that the patient comes with emotion on, we change for brackets. We have been today more than 1,000 people in this webinar. So thank you to you all of every part of the world. Uh, yes. World will be sooner or later like it was. And we will be again happy and we will be hugging each other again uh, very soon. So this is an opportunity, a sad opportunity to brainstorm about the important things in life. No? And, and if I can give you an advice, stay home and be isolated because it's the only way to stop this mess. Uh, don't break this, uh, this isolation. Don't break it because if we all do the same, we will cut that uh, very, uh, very uh, efficiently. Thank you, Dr. Carrier. It's a Thank pleasure. Thank you very much for you all. Thank you. Goodbye.